So tell me a little bit about your technique. Do you, you know, how do you figure out what tapping you want to include? Or <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, uh, I guess as, as I mentioned before, it's, it's, it's all about facilitating the music. You know, it, it's, uh, you write what you want to hear and then you have to figure out how to play it. You know, and, and uh, a lot of the, the principles around what I'm doing and what a lot of other players have been doing before me is that they'll just want to, I guess they just want to hear more notes or, or more sounds than a traditional guitarist would make using mm -hmm. traditional techniques. So these these ideas are used, things like tapping and percussion are used to, to kind of get the sounds out of people's head and into mm -hmm. people's ears, I suppose. So um, say I'm, I'm strumming a chord, um, you know, new strings, a little bit out of tune. I'm strumming a chord, but I want to get a, a bass drum at the same time. There's a bass drum, so I can strum and hit the bass drum at the same time, right? Ooh, yeah. Say I want a snare drum sound, like, uh, I don't know, very simple click, you know, you can do that and strum at the same time, you know, so if, if I take the chord away and just scratch for now, you can mm -hmm. see I can do a bass drum and strumming and snare drums, you know. That kind, that kind of idea, and there's all kinds of sounds you can get, and it's just finding different ways to combine them, you know, uh, that, 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 right. that kind of thing, you know, just, just picking notes and hitting things at the same time. That's, that's a lot of the, uh, that, that's got a lot to do with what I'm, what I'm kind of doing at the moment, and the things I'm writing right now as well use a lot of those, those ideas. So how do you notate that so that you remember what to do? <laughs> with, with difficulty. Um, for, for, for my personal use, I actually just use things like iMovie. So I just record the video because you know, that's easy to, to see. But um, I have a lot of tabs, uh, guitar, guitar tab using Guitar Pro 6. And uh, with that, I, I just have a percussion stave underneath the regular stave. So I, I would write it like someone would write guitar and drums together but yeah. there'd be little text instructions saying you know contort your hand in this way whilst doing this and standing on one foot yeah. and <laughs> so all those are in written instructions so, so it, it is possible it's just um yeah. there's no real standardization for i guess percussive acoustic guitar notation so um with every new idea that that comes a new sort of you know means to notate it has to has to happen. Are there sort of standard moves that you standard use moves. that other people <laughs> do as well, or I, are they? Oh just yeah, sort of yeah. Well, I mean, a, a lot of yeah, a, lot, a lot of people share the same influences. You know, I yeah. mentioned Michael Hedges, and a lot of the um, you know, for, for perhaps my generation, a lot of the early sort of YouTube fingerstyle guitar videos. I mean, you you know, Andy McKee, people yeah, like yeah. that. You know, so there's a lot of that 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 people do with the these kind of sounds. Right. You know. Okay. And you know, my, a good friend of mine from Finland, Petri Sariola, does a lot of the similar stuff around the sound hole, which mm. I guess kind of, um, that, that, that idea actually influences a lot of stuff I do. I like to try and stay, or at least for my newer compositions, I like to stay around the sound hole area so you can pick, you know, you can pick notes at the same right. time rather than being limited right. to what you can do right. around here. Right. Okay, so if there's, if there's one thing that I guess people might take away from what I'm doing specifically, it would be that I like to stay around the sound hole and maybe contort my hands in very unusual ways. And the somebody that I used to know arrangement is a great example of that. There's moments where there's, you know, a mm. bass note, a bass drum, a chord and a, a, a hammered melody and a, a weird tap to get some kind of percussion. So, but it's all localized to this area. Yeah, that's mm. cool. So tell me about your go-to tunings. I'm guessing you go -to use. Go-to tunings. I'm guessing you use um, some yeah. well, interesting and I, varied tunings. Yeah, I don't really use standard tuning. I mean, I, for my work with Justin, I, I use standard tuning quite a bit because a lot of those songs started life in standard tuning. But um, most of my songs on What Just Happened started life in dadgad tuning, mm -hmm. um, which is actually the one what I'm in now. It's an open D sus four chord. And I got that from learning Pierre Ben Susan's music, um, specifically from his album Intuite or Intuit, um, which is one of my favorite guitar albums ever. Uh, but um, I use a lot of different tunings. Uh, I, have a, I have a cover of a song called Titanium, which is C, G, D, G, B flat, C. Hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but a lot of them tend to start life in one tuning where I'm semi-comfortable and then if 
again, I'll, I'll need to reach a certain note. If I can't reach that note, I'll have to change the tuning to mm. facilitate that. So uh, one of the guys I'm on tour with, Pino, he has about 56 different tunings. Wow. It's crazy. And uh, he'll, he'll write on a piano or something, hit notes, get the, the melody he wants, hit notes, get the bass line he wants, and then he'll make the tuning around that. Yeah. You know? So the music comes first, the tuning comes later. Right. right? So that's that's a similar principle to what I'm doing. The tuning suits the... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Reformers, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, cool. I suppose one of the philosophies around this kind of guitar playing is that there are no limits. So if you're trying to write a song in a tuning, you're already limiting yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So you've got to be you got to be willing to get two thirds of the way through a song, then realize there's a note you can't get, retune it, and go all the way back and wow. start again, right? That's dedication. That's dedication, <laughs> yeah. But it happens, you know, it happens, it happens. quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. So you're working on music for an, a new album? New album, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've been touring so much um, since the uh, my first album came out, but I've I've got into the habit of trying to write in hotels, mm -hmm. and I've done a, a cover song of a, a friend's metal band, oh. actually, which is hopefully going to make the album. And um, just two days ago, I started backstage working on the first original track for the mm -hmm. album, which is really exciting. I haven't been so excited about a riff uh, for a very long time, so I'm really looking forward to how that is coming out. But uh, I'm taking April and August off to do writing, so okay. hopefully by the end of August, I'll have a, an amount of it done. So maybe maybe late 2015 release. Okay, as a, we'll as look a, for that. Yeah, <laughs> as, as a rough ballpark. That's great. Is there anything else I didn't ask you about that you'd like to mention? <laughs> <laughs> well, so much stuff. Um, well, I, I'm i on tour all the time, and um, I'd very much like to see you at the gigs if you're interested in coming. And uh, all the dates are on MikeDoors.com or my Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook's uh, my, where I hang out all the time. Okay. So that's Facebook.com slash official. And uh, always uploading photos and videos and things like that. And um, you said you're going to be back in the U.S. later. The yes, US yes, I am. That's the thing that hasn't been announced yet. But oh, I may or may not be here in May and June. <laughs> Wink. Uh, but uh, yeah, and maybe by the time this gets uploaded, it'll be on my website. But that's MikeDoors.com, and that'll be a big, another big U.S. tour. So hopefully, get to see you guys there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.